Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. We're starting case 1-5, Rise from the Ashes. As I've mentioned before, this case was added in the DS version of the first game, so it was made after the original trilogy. Um, it uses a couple of DS specific features on the DS version, like the microphone and the touchscreen. The Switch has a touchscreen, it doesn't have a microphone, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Also, you can usually play Switch games without using the touchscreen, unlike DS games, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, also, I messed with the recording settings a little bit before doing this video. I think it should have slightly better audio for my dialogue and stuff than before. Um, let me know. Anyway, let's go. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is... Sorry, that is... Until the day that girl showed up. February 22nd, 10.02 a.m. Wright and Co. Law Offices. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are! Finally! Where have you been? My sister's trial is tomorrow! Um... Who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey! Oh, uh... You're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Ms. Mia Fey no longer works here. So you are? The coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait! You're THE Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please! I'm out of time! But... Please, you have to help! It's my sister! Maya? Could it be? Okay, I'll hear you out. R really Thank you so much! My name's Ema, Ema Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Okay, so yeah, Ema is my favourite character, honestly. I love her. <laughs> Look at this cutie pie. She's so precious. Um... And ba just basically the same as Maya. Like, the game just pointed it out. Um, but yeah, I love her. <laughs> Actually, no, Robin is my favourite character. We might see her later, if they end up releasing the later games on the on the Switch, so I can show, show her to you. Um, but... Ema was my favourite character. <laughs> Until then. Um, Robin's in the fifth game, which hasn't been released on the Switch yet. Anyway. Ema, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of, uh, jumpy. Or maybe just young? Hang on, I didn't time that right. Or maybe just... young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensic... Forensic... Forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known, at my age no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age no less. Great, another future professional in training. So what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So, it's a murder case? 
I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. J just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right. I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Faye, but... That's interesting. How would she know Mia? So, you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up, then? Uh, excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Sweetie, you're 15. You're a child. You're a little baby. I love you. Still, it's good to have a goal. Albeit a very unusual one. I think I was 15 when I first played this. Like, I was the same age as Azima. That's cute. <laughs> I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure can't fault her for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Faye person was a few years below her in school. They went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But, but she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. But why did Phoenix ask that? I mean, if your sister's your only family, obviously you haven't got parents. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> God. Anyway, um, so that's Ema. I love her. She is precious baby. February 22nd, detention center, visitor's room. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Ema. Well, her sister's in, been arrested for murder, so that's probably part of it. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. God, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. S -s -s Sorry, ma'am, it's j -j just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year, hmm? Uh, understood, ma'am. What was all that about? Hi, Lana. Honey, I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing. L look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Ema. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what exactly is it that you do? Actually, what did Mia say? Like, Phoenix only had one case b before, you know, she died. So, like, what is there to say? <laughs> Lana, Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Y you're a prosecutor? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? N no, Phoenix. It's it's really conspicuously obvious coincidence writing that they've done on purpose, and you're pointing that out. Ema, Lana. I mean, they're just like. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Is 
something you should know from the start. Which is? The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? W wait, but the suspect... The suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21, at 5.15pm. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk? Classy. I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed as it were. Well, that's just great. So, who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By... you. Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What? Mr. Wright, what does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. Hey, cab! This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. So, you're the chief prosecutor? That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the, jo do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Ema told you that too, did she? But, well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! It was in law school. I was in my third year, and she was ordered in the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. Also, romantically. Honestly, let's 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 be clear about this. Romantically. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Ema says it. Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, excuse me? As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say there's no way you can take this case. None. But, but Lana! Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So... So how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I... I hate you, Lana. Mr. Wright? Y yes I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. Um... You mean, you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right. Uh, I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes. But something doesn't fit. 
that look in Ema's eyes. There's something else going on here, and I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know? I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Uh, okay! Let's go. February 22nd, prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. So this is the lot where it all happened? Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work! But hey, what are you thinking? Well, they're gonna be my co-workers three years from now, after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes? <laughs> Phoenix, you do it all the time, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to not stand out too much here, see? I forget who this is, so I don't know what voice to use. Oh, hey there. Oh, right, it's you. You expect- You expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? P partner What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. This is the only American accent I have, and he's, you know, he's a cowboy. Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. M Mr. Marshall. Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim of territory with a mother load of evidence. You're fixing to mess with what's ours. You regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? We head along home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Was that a hombre, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. He thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. I believe we are allowed to look around because he just left, so we can get a look at some of this stuff. Aha! A ladder! Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. S scientific, huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. I have to look at the step ladder, it's very important. Um, we've got a phone over here. Here, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure? What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. There's a wallet on the floor. What's this? A wallet? Yes, it's a wallet. Um, excuse me, officer. W wait what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. Phoenix, have you not learned that ACAB yet? I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. ACAB. ACAB, Phoenix. <laughs> Wallet hastily stuffed into pocket. I'm called to duty already and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way her eyes are sparkling, I can tell she's been waiting for this. 
Okay, okay now. Look at the court record. So this is a new feature that they added for this case because it's the DS version. You can look at evidence in 3D. Sort of. I mean, it's a 3D model. The DS didn't have 3D gra graphics, so, you know, it's still 2D. But you use the touchscreen, spin it around and stuff. So we'll see how it works in this version. You have to be sure to, to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now, let's start examining from every angle. Uh, okay. Oh, look. I think there might be a clue here. You should check it out with the press of the A button. So yeah, we can spin the wallet around look at the different sides and we can zoom in and zoom out and stuff and yeah this is pretty much the same as it was on the DS version except that you use the touchscreen uh, there were like little wheels on the sides for spinning it in different directions but here you just use an analog stick which is more comfortable really this this is an ID card it's very blurry Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID number 5842189. See? Well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Goodman's ID added to the court record. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. So yeah, we can check our badge the same way. There it is. Get a nice good look at it. We know our ID number now. Uh, also, on the back, instead of having like a pin or something, it's got like a bolt, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I, I guess Phoenix is a robot. <laughs> anyway, we want to come over here because there's some more evidence in here. Boop. Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. The sheriff. Like I said before, this here is our claim. You'd best be moseying along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Gah, scary. Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well. Little Philly's got a good nose on her. Little Philly. Well, imagine, imagine he was a little, little horse. Oh, you so cute. <laughs> you want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the, pro of the prospector's office. You might just find yourself, find you a cerveza you like. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when, for that matter? Note yourself. Look up Vittles Saloon Cerveza. Maybe we should check out room 12012, the High Prosecutor's Office. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like, just keep your paws off our claim. Right, great. Great! Maybe there's some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. I forget who this is. Excuse me? You two all set? Us? Oh, it's you! Okay, cool. What's this? She couldn't be... You're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene. Hello. Half and half, was it? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Y yes Some crunchy goodness coming at ya. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off-limits to anyone without clearance. Especially passers-by. Or you officers. Uh, no, but you... You don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. Well, that's probably a way to greet someone. Even if my days as the cough-up queen are over. Cough-up? Huh? You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burning to my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Jimmy, 
You are a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder. The stabbing of that detective. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness? My sister was talking about? Please, cough up Queen. Tell us what happened. Her name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Before you know it, I'll be whimpering at my heels. Y yes ma'am. Yipes. She means it. She's pretty cute. I like to think she's trans. Somehow, I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was gonna happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. The evil ones? Prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, some um, evil? Young miss, you mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the cough-up queen. Ew! The most heinous of all the evil ones, the one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. R really? Really what? I'm totally confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. So, what exactly was it that you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. The St. Lana Sky wheeled that knife so. Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. You mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second. You know Lana Sky? Hmm, of course. Quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now why would this pretty young lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? She didn't actually say young. He didn't say young, he said pretty lunch lady. <laughs> Whatever. Angel. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, mister? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no Only true connoisseurs can understand. The kind you can only tell someone who has tried General Tso's trilobite lunch set. Ah, never mind, you win. I don't even want to appreciate part of a trilobite's flavour. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway? I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Ms. Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis. Not... Wayne's World. <laughs> Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? Huh. <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in the chowder. I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. 
That'd be a sure case of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough-up queen. I thought you were just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Yeah, she's not just a lunch vendor, trust me. Why is this card so blurry? Did they not, like, bother to give it a more detailed model? That information is supposed to be readable. It says Sergeant Bruce Goodman and has an ID number. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. They're the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID. Y-A-B-A-D-A-B. -A -A -B. See? Wouldn't that be better? Y-A-B-A-D-A-B? -A -A -B. Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point! Tee-hee! <laughs> doesn't take much to amuse her. Cute. Okay, I think we've done all we can here for the moment, so let's head up to the High Prosecutor's Office. February 22nd, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, there must be a real stuck-up jerk. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice. Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! Mr. Edgeworth! You know him from somewhere? Oh, of course! I'm his biggest fan! My sister introduced us once, and... Right. My sister is the chief prosecutor, after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. No, did I? No! It was just Mr. Wright here, he... Hey, don't blame me. Where does he investigate a murder case? Murder? A body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm. That would be... my car. What of it? What? Y your car? I'll say one thing, she certainly can scream. Okay, so we need to know about- this trophy is quite important, so let's have a look at it. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Oh, prosecutors. <laughs> Mumbles of prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. The, the King of Prosecutors? It's a great honour. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for King? Yeah, you got a problem with that? I didn't design the thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like Employee of the Month, only better. King of Prosecutors for every edge of the court record. It's quite important, so we do need that. Um, I think that's the only thing we have to look at in this room, but we can talk to Edgeworth about some stuff. So the body was found in your car? Go ahead, say it, right? You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. No, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she, she didn't do that. I mean... Wait. So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Yes, sir. Ema Sky. It, uh, it's nice to meet you again. No, that didn't sound forced at all. Oh, was it supposed to sound forced? Oops. Yeah, it, it's nice to meet you again. There we go. <laughs> oh, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit, it was a surprise for me, too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still. I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. Wait, what did you say? Lana Sky is the chief prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. 
You? Mr. Edgeworth. To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumours. You've heard the rumours about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumours about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, Mr. You, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy! Hmm. Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. But... Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's gotta be a story behind that one. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago. I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed them, him with my knife. What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Edgeworth's knife added to the court record. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? Come on, can't you take a joke? You have a strange sense of humour, Mr. Wright. Okay, I believe we need to ask uh, Edgeworth about the shield. So basically, this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? Lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why's that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award, for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? For what it's worth, it is quite important that that shield is broken. Uh, we'll find out why it's broken later, and it will be relevant. Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Oops, cleaning day. Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves in our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Edgeworth's parking stub added to the court record. This is the parking stub from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back? What right? I'd appreciate it if you'd direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um... Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir, at the crush of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? 
I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, the sky, sir? No, sir. No any of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. I think I just heard Edgeworth, Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth's lid is non very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir, but, but sir! I'm just following orders, sir. They told me to bring this to you. I wasn't aware of the pictures of your arrangement with us, sir. Give me your name. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. M M Meekins, sir. Officer Meekins. Right. Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. But, sir, I didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Right. Y yes, sir. Gah, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. Let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as that patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down at least. Okay, so we're gonna go to the police department. Uh, hi, Angel. Boop. February 22nd, police department. Entrance. Whew, we're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me. I took almost 30 minutes by taxi, and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm. Hold on, what's that? Oh. This is an infamous part of the case. Um, you'll see. Disturbing. Why does it undulate like that? Oh, wait, I know. This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright. You sure know, sure know a lot about the police. He doesn't know the most important thing. A cab. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the Blue Badger. Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. Uh, hey, pal. W what are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Uh, well... Well, this doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. Detective Gumshoe. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. W why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no, come on, pal. There's plenty of evidence against her. But what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal, can I speak to you for a second? Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just, it's a sensitive issue with us these days. Hey, cab! So... What are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, is my sister's case and all? It's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being let into criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? Now this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? 
So, anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the Badger Dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? Chief of Police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall? Now that I think about it, Ema did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of a crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. To ask you about some stuff. I think maybe this? Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Are you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgotten. But I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth winning that award. Even with all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? I see because of the rumours. Got a drink there? Um. Handing Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um... Someone who must have had a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organised to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Can we talk about it? Yes. He's in a tough spot again. Again? Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher ups. It's only natural that people will be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Um, Detective Gumshoe? What can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey pal, this is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that, you have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me in so much trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Hmm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. No, my mistake. But, didn't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman. He's the victim. That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? So, this ID card belonged to the victim. He was a detective, like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm. Don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal? Oh, evidence transferal. Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. else I can ask about? My badge? De Detective, here's my attorney's badge. You show this to me every time we meet, pal. Real men show their police badge. Enough said. A cab. A cab. I wish I had a badge. I wish had a badge. Did you know I had a badge? <laughs> Even an ID card would be nice. Wait. Speaking of ID cards, I had a detective's card, didn't I? 
Yeah, it's giving you a clue to give to show the card to him, but he already did. Oddly enough, Ema does have an ID card. If we go back to the offices, you can see she's wearing one. Clearly, on her pocket there, so I don't know what she's talking about. Anyway, um, I think we're done at the police department for now, so I guess I'll go back to the parking lot? Nothing new to do here. Maybe I can ask Angel about this trophy? Could you take a look at this? You! Yes? You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Uh, no, but thanks. You shouldn't even look at me. Mmm, you must have to brew the leaves a long time to get rich flavor like this. We pre-infuse the leaves with steam before brewing. I knew it! That's the secret to aroma. Exquisite! The only thing I'm smelling here is wasted time. So that's what you get if you show, show us something that doesn't mean anything. About this card. Lunchline vendors only accept cash. No cards. Especially not a card belonging to someone else. No, no, this isn't a credit card. It's an ID card. It belongs to a detective. And you're showing this to me, the lunch lady? Why? That's like showing a fine honeyed ham to a detective. Why do I always feel like I'm being mocked? Okay, uh, yeah, we can't do much there either. I forget what we have to do at this point. Uh, Lana's gone. Um, can we go back to Edgeworth's office? We can. Is there anything in there? No. One problem with this case, in my opinion, is that it's pretty much... Like, I did say that the Turnabout Samurai had the worst investigations, but honestly, this one's probably worse. Um, there's a whole lot of directionless nonsense. Actually, I think what we have to do is look at the Blue Badger. Uh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. You made this, Detective Gumshoe? The Chief threw together some designs, and I just did my thing, pal. N nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dance, dance, dance till the batteries die. Poor Blue Badger. Fated to dance until he drops. Blue Badger panel art for the court record. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? You met the guy who is. What was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall? Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? No, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West LA. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this and they'll let you examine the, the crime scene. Maybe. This is Gumshoe's letter of introduction to the court record. I'm surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there and nobody will look at you twice, pal. Okay, uh, I believe we can go investigate the crime scene now we've done that. February 22nd, Prosecutor's Office, Underground Parking Lot. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. I don't know who, whose voice this is. I, I think it might be Officer Marshall. I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. Let's see my dreams tonight then, baby. Maybe you know I don't know who it is. I think it was a boyfriend. Okay. Oh, still here? Uh hello. Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Phoenix. She has multiple boyfriends. That's not a problem. Just deal. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Okay, now we can talk to him. There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. A cold grave for men who've lost their dreams. And me? I watch over them as they sleep, dreaming of the desert's harsh judgment. He's asleep. We show this hopeless case something to catch his interest. Yeah, we have to actually give him the letter so that he can 
Would you mind reading this to me? What's this? I warn you. Sand letters to me go right in the spittoon. A lot of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe? Uh, that old co that old cow dog? Hmm. You holding a birthday party or something? Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Uh, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries. This proves from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. Guess I better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't the crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or hire? Well, folks. The clues are calling. Log into our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot nanny. Ugh. Note to self, police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be eating this anymore. We have Gumshoe's letter introduction crumpled and discarded. Okay, we can actually talk to him now. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more us tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well. Aren't you a feisty doggy there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. The smile in Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Ms. Angel Star. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here is the autopsy report. Goodman's autopsy report added to the court record. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So, there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why I didn't do much work with the Chief Prospector. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot. So it seems, like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Um, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago to tell you, tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So, why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. That's odd, though. That kid Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth. That cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, you don't realize it yet. Is it Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? Okay, we can now go over here and have a look. So let's have a look at some of the stuff we have here. This rope, is it? Yep, they laid it out in the outline of, in the vic in the outline of the victim's body. So wait, the victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. You've got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. I mean, it's this Maya. Maya would say that too. Because she's basically the same character. <laughs> this looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Right, let's check it out. Man, what a boring strap. What's wrong with it? Everyone has different tastes, you know. Here, check out mine. It's a pink princess strap. These are hard to come by, you know. See, the series is as popular as ever with the kids. 
So that wasn't important at all, but you know, we can check that out. The important thing is if we look at the way you open this phone is for some reason pushing this button on the side instead of just flipping it up like a normal phone. Normal flip phone at the time. I don't know, it's weird. See? Hmm, this phone's still on the redial screen. Is it? Looks like there's nothing on the screen. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright, most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things of, like, redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you never know with people from your generation. Whatever. Let's check this phone out. So yeah, what we want to do is redial the previous number and see what happens, basically. Now, to say who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first, he just pushes the button. <laughs> hey, that song, I know that. Hey, what's going on over there? Uh, oh, sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this, anyway? It was on the ground over there. Who, whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody, right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds, according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now, I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ring tunes. Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. W what? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as I picked up the other phone. Uh, wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh. I've incited the wrath of the Long Lone Star Patrolman. So I'm going to enter the court record. So, there's no connection between Victor Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the prospect of tomorrow was none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall. Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, someone's up to something here. But who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying for nearly two years now. Forged evidence and arranging testimonies, you mean. He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospector Lana Sky. What? M my sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cow by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets, some people load them with deals. What? You're saying Edgeworth is making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? his cell phone. The last time it was used was 518, right after Goodman was killed. Maybe she was cancelling her date for the night. Why did Lana make 
that coal. All right, compadre, count to three. Huh? You gotta do that if you're gonna draw evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remind me never to visit Texas. Uh, What's that? Some sort of police passport? This is Detective Goodman's ID card. Strangely enough, we found it a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance in this rat hole? If you want distance, get yourself to Texas. Texas? This is a tiny little crime scene in a tiny little town with tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? Note to self, if you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. There's no better way to study than to hang out with the pros. Uh, need a trophy? Ah, toy shield. Suits the boy well. What exactly could you shield with that? A toy knight, maybe? Officer Marshall, don't you have anything good to say about Mr. Edgeworth? You don't like him, right? We get the point. You know, when I was a detective, I got one of these. Hmm, let me guess. Did it have a cave the king of detectives on it? Hey, I could use the same shield over and over. Note to self, the prosecutor's office in criminal affairs are surprisingly cheap. You know it. They've gotten cheaper with every passing year, I tell ya. Uh, knife maybe? No, we already did this one. Uh, my badge? I see your badge. Looks pretty round. Our badge is a star, a lone star, shining in the nighttime sky. A beam of light, illuminating evildoers who come into the dark of night. Note to self, evildoers are weak against starlight. Hey, it's a sheriff's badge. Uh, I'm not sure what else I need to do. I've talked to him about everything. Uh, the phone doesn't need rescanning or anything. Presented everything I can think of. Uh, let's try and run around a little bit and see if there's an event somewhere else. Nope. Yeah, again, this case has a lot of like aimlessness to it that other cases I think don't really have. Uh, parking stub? Oh, there we are. 5 12 p.m. Prospector's bright red speed came in at a trot. Real slow luck. A trot? My Madonna tells me the crime occurred three minutes later. So it seems the chief prospector was lying in wait. Maybe waiting for a prince to ride in on his bright red horse. So what you mean is the killer intended to use Edgeworth's car all along. Badger. Talked to you about everything already. Um, I don't know what else to do. Uh, I can examine the car. Let's have a look. This appears to be the car where the body was found. Looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. The crime took place in the underground parking lot of the prospectors, pr prospectors, the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Quite a luxury car. This screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. Okay, so that wasn't important. Um, this wall is in our way. It's got to force it for water. Wait, I know! This wall is merely a facade, hold, hiding the truth. This is no wall, but a water tank! I failed to see how it makes any difference either way. Out of ideas on what to do next. <laughs> um, let me think. Maybe we need to examine some of these pieces of evidence for clues? I don't think so, though. I do during finals. Never mind, it's nothing. Hmm. I'm out of 
find this. I want to do the idea. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. The defense attorneys are relegated to B block. My dream of the day when I'll be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B block to buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. Where the cars leave the lot. The arrow on the ground makes it look like, more like an entrance. What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Or maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose? Aha! The theory of relativity! What? Huh? I've got to write this down. Ah, uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright! Maybe you know, was Mr. Relativity German or was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? Cute. He was German. <laughs> Look, a door! This must mean something! I'm not sure the doors mean anything. No, it won't open! A mysterious lock! I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? I think I've looked at everything worth looking at. I'm really confused as to what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> um... Police department, I can do? I don't think so. I could ask him about this new piece of evidence. No, not about do that either. Good. Yeah. He doesn't have anything to say about either of those. Hmm. Um, hmm. I am stuck. <laughs> Oh, hang on. There we go. Aha! This is important. What's this? It looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. You're right. Let's see. 6, 7, S, 12, slash 2. There's a name written on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed? Well, so, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self, but deductive reasoning go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Goodman's no add to the court record. So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? Okay, so yeah, that's what I missed. You can see it's a bit of a pixel hunt. Um, and the, like, the, um, little check mark on the magnifying glass is a new feature in this version of the game. It didn't do that in the original versions, so... Yeah, it was annoying. I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Ema. Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show? For kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. At 5.18, just after the murder took place. Your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. Cell phone updated the court record. The detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. To be continued. Okay, finally. <laughs> so that's uh, the longest video in this series so far. Uh, next time, we start the trial. Look forward to it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching, and bye!